Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. So today we're getting back to the exotic shotgun shells. Um, I brought two different shells with me. Uh, we have the, I believe they're the piranhas, and they are filled with just a bunch of steel nails. So like we did the other day, um, we have a head of lettuce, a spaghetti squash, and a cantaloupe that we're gonna shoot that at. I actually might substitute the lettuce out for um, I have a scrap piece of drywall in the bed of my truck. I'm gonna break that up and see uh, see how many layers of that that'll go through. Um, so I, I think I'm actually gonna substitute the lettuce out for the drywall. And then the other shells that I brought up for it were the dragon's breath. And if you're unfamiliar with that, they it's basically just fireballs. Um, I have a decent pile of brush sitting next to my driveway that I'm going to shoot these into because I need to burn this and you know that is an appropriate way to do that up at the Freedom Compound so we're going to try to set that on fire um, and the reason I'm doing that today is because the last couple weeks we've been getting a lot of rain so um, the pile of brush is probably a little wet uh, but everything else around it is also wet so there's not there's not any risk of you know me starting some crazy wild forest fire. So those are the two different shells that we're going to be running today. So we're going to get up to the uh, the compound here. We're going to get set up and we're going to have some Sunday morning fun. Okay, everybody. So the first round, or I'm sorry, the first shell that we're going to use is going to be uh, the piranha. Now, according to the back side of this, uh, this shell is packed full of steel nails. So again, this is for a 12 gauge shotgun only. They uh, definitely specify that. You don't want to try to put this in a uh, you know, 10 gauge or something. So you definitely want to use the gun that they tell you to use on these. Um, I'll take you over here and show you what we're going to be shooting at. We have uh, a spaghetti squash, which again, I'll get you closer, but the spaghetti squash is right here. We got a cantaloupe right here, and I have two layers of, what is that, 5 8 drywall with a piece of LVL beam behind it. We're going to go ahead and shoot that and see if we can get a bunch of nails to stick in it. Double up buckshot. Ready to rock and roll. Spaghetti squash. Lettuce. And cantaloupe. <laughs> Lettuce. And cantaloupe. Okay guys, so we have three shells loaded up in our shotgun here. Chambered, safety's off, spaghetti squash is first. All right, that was a way better result than I had thought. Cantaloupe's next. And I'm going to back up a little bit. I don't want anything to ricochet off. Drywall. So there we have it. There's our three rounds of the piranha shell that shoots small nails, I guess.
All right, so guys, I'm over here inspecting the damage here. Obviously, there's no cantaloupe or spaghetti squash to try to dig the nails out of like we did on those, um, what were those ones called? The ones that had the little metal darts in them. But just looking to where I had the cantaloupe sitting, I'm seeing a couple, couple of these little nails here. And that is as advertised. Just little, little steel nails. <laughs> that is crazy. Don't want to get hit by one of those for sure. Okay, everybody. Like I said, this is the pile of brush that I need to set on fire that we pulled out from uh, the culvert pipes over there. Um, all of this stuff over here is pretty soaking wet, uh, but combination between all the rain we've been getting plus all the frost that we had this morning, uh, I don't think we have to worry about any of that catching on fire. So what I'm hoping for is to kind of set this on fire. Now I know this stuff is all wet as well. So do I expect these to set these on fire? Uh, not really sure what I expect, but I don't think we're in any danger. Of setting any of this on fire so we're gonna go ahead and get our Stevens 12 gauge shotgun loaded up with our dragon's breath rounds um, and like the back says it produces an enormous wall of fire for 250 feet so we're gonna load them up and see what happens okay guys so we have three rounds of our dragon's breath shotgun shells loaded up we're gonna go ahead and see if we can light that on fire I'm gonna move a little bit closer, try to keep some of that contained more. I see a little flame going kind of right in that pocket. <laughs> okay, so that was number two. Okay, so with two shots, we have a nice little fire going here. I'm going to hold off to see what this does before I send round number three into it. Because if it's just going to burn off the top here, then we might be able to get something a little bit better going. Okay, so I know I still have one round of Dragon's Breath left. Uh, I think I'm going to save that for whenever we have our first official camp out over here at the Freedom Compound. I think that would be a pretty cool way to christen it. Um, so the fire's, the, I'm sorry, the dragon's breath, uh, basically just the fireball, it gets shot out. Um, I feel like if we had some kerosene or maybe some diesel or oil on that fire, it would have kept going. Um, for the most part, it did set just kind of the dead grass on fire. Um, still a pretty cool round though. So if you're thinking about getting it, Make sure you use it in an area that is very wet. Do not use it around dry brush because all the dead grass that was on there, it was dry. It spread pretty quick. Um, but like I said, it got to the uh, live, the, the green grass that is alive. Sorry, tripping over my words here on Sunday morning um, and kind of died off. So if you're gonna use it, do not use it in a dry area. Use it in an area, um, you know, where you can, easily contain something should the fire want to spread. Um, it is a pretty cool novelty uh, shell to use to start a fire. So just exercise with caution, please. All right, guys, so I know this video was only two new ones. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the buckshot just because I feel like that's a, a nice control until I switch to like a uh, sort of like a test wall. I'm gonna 
try to build um, just like a small little two foot by two foot, um, four inches thick, just wall to kind of simulate an interior wall. And then to go the extra step, I, I know I have extra insulation at my house, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put insulation in it as well uh, for some of those other shotgun shells. But for now, anytime we're shooting, you know, something like this produce, like the spaghetti squash or cantaloupe, sorry, I'm trying to keep the sun from glaring. Um, I'm gonna show the buckshot just as a control and then compare it to what other specialty shell, in this case, the, uh, the piranha shell, the steel nails, which that one was pretty cool. I've never, I, I've, I, I would never think to put nails in a shotgun shell, but hey, it works, does the trick. Um, so between that being really cool and the dragon's breath also being a really cool novelty shell, um, both of those shells you are gonna wanna exercise extreme caution with. Um, as I said, the dragon's breath you definitely want to make sure you're not shooting it off in some super dry area with a lot of dead grass or dead brush because it will it will spread pretty quick. Um, yeah, this was uh, this was a nice way to kill a couple hours up here at the Freedom Compound. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there's more exotic shotgun shells to come. So if you liked what you saw in this episode, please click the like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.